We are pleased to be joined now by Dr. Keith Obstein and Peter Slavinsky. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. You thank are you for inviting co authors us. of a new study about the first ever autonomously controlled capsule robot to explore a colon. Peter, let's start with you. How exactly does this work? So, we use magnetic fields to actuate our device. In traditional colonoscopy, uh, the doctor pushes the endoscope from the rear, and this can cause some tissue stress. So we try to mitigate this by pulling the device from the front rather than actuating for, uh, from the back. Uh, so uh, we hope to mitigate the discomfort uh, this way. And any potential damage it could cause? Right, right. So um, it's all about safety. Um, so uh, we have some technology in our capsule that allows us to control it. Um, we know where it is in space and we're able to apply some algorithms to make it move uh, how the doctor would want it to move. So um, colonoscopy contains some repetitive, uh, repetitive maneuvers. One of these is retroflexion. Uh, so now we, we implemented an uh, autonomous maneuver to have our capsule retroflex. Very interesting. A capsule doctor not only performs diagnostics, but it can also remove polyps and, and do biopsies. Is that right? Sure. So the way that we've designed uh, our capsule colonoscope is essentially so that it would have both diagnostic and therapeutic capability. And so you can pass traditional endoscopic instruments such as biopsies, snares, hemostatic clips through our tether that connects to the end of the capsule endoscope so that you can perform those maneuvers successfully. And I know you've already had some trials, but you'll be starting human trials uh, sometime down the road, Peter, is that right? Our goal is to do that by the end of 2018, so we're working on it. So really right around the corner, not too far away, yeah? I hope so, yeah. All right. Uh, and one of your hopes about this technology, Doctor, since it's so small and non-invasive, is that this type of procedure might take away some of the patient's uh, concern about having a colonoscopy because when anybody thinks about colonoscopy, they don't think about uh, comfortable necessarily, even though it, it can be fine. Sure, yeah. I think one of the primary goals in this is uh, colonoscopy can be intimidating for patients. And we know that colorectal cancer screening through colonoscopy does save lives. And so therefore, many people forego it for either preconceived uh, notions about the procedure itself, fear or misconceptions about the procedure. And so if we can bring this to patients to try and increase compliance with screening guidelines through either making it less intimidating or even mitigating some of the risk involved or even the need for sedation, that would be a success. So what was the motivation? Was it, was it partially that or, or where did you get the motivation to come up with this? So I think the motivation is primarily based on hearing from uh, patients and knowing that there's a population of individuals who forego recommended screening for a variety of these reasons. And so if we can um, overcome that for them or help facilitate the process to get them screened, that would be a good thing. You make a lot of people very happy. Yes. Dr. Keith Obstein, Peter Slavinsky, thank you gentlemen very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. All right.